Hello, I believe this is episode five, four or five of editing your photos. Thank you guys so much for sending in photos. As always, if you have a photo to send in, go ahead and send it here to this email address that I've got on the screen. If these videos have helped you at all, if this is even your second video of mine that you're watching, I would go ahead and encourage you to subscribe. It helps me out, it'll help you out, and we can both grow in our photography journey together. Today we are editing a photo from Rajat Rahat, and I know I'm butchering your name, I am so terribly sorry, but I am so glad you sent in this photo. The problem with this photo is that it's so blue and there's so much haze going on, but it's a great shot of mountains. So we're going to go ahead and see what we can do to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. The first thing that I notice is we're a little bit underexposed, so let's go ahead and increase our exposure. Now we don't want to go too high because we're starting to lose definition in the mountains. So let's go ahead and bring that back. I think somewhere around there seems pretty good. And as always, we'll go ahead and add in some black to give more contrast. And I've really been having fun with this shadow compression slider lately because watch what happens over here in the histogram. If I increase that, it actually compresses the shadow side, if I decreases the shadow compression, it, it decompresses the shadows. And so you can actually get greater contrast. You can see with the shadow compression at zero, these plants here in the foreground are completely black. Or if I increase it to 100, I lose contrast. But this can be really helpful when you're dealing with very, very dark photos. This is not a dark photo. I'm just pointing this out that I realized I can get greater control using the shadow compression. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave that at a 57. Okay, so the first thing that you can do to deal with haze like this is to come into your tone curves and bring the tone curves in to where your image really starts. So you can see on the histogram here, there's just a little bit of color and then all of a sudden, boom, we have a lot of color going here all the way over until there's no color. There's no color. And haze results from a lack of contrast. So by adding contrast back into the image, we can bring some of that haze down. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this bottom point in a little bit. And then I'm going to pull this top point over. And you can even bring the point down here to the bottom where the colors are and then bring it up to the top, see where things are at. Now that's going to be a little bit too much. So let's bring in a little bit back, maybe something like that. We can even pull down on the curve here. Okay, now we can really see the difference in the haze and not, which is going to then bring us to our haze removal tool. And you can see that really helps out a lot. I'm going to click this show depth map. I'm going to increase. So I have this depth map on. I'm going to bring my strength to about 10 and then I'm going to increase the depth. So you can see the difference here. I have a since these mountains are so far away, but I don't want the haze removal to really change the colors of the photo, uh, I can go ahead and have a high depth number, but then have a lower strength. So this seems to be what I found works, works best for this photo. Then, of course, we have local contrast that we can turn on to bring out some more. And as I'm looking at this photo, I'm realizing that I like there being contrast in the mountains down here, this being lighter as well. So I'm actually going to come back to my exposure tab and go ahead and turn on the graduated filter. And then I'm just going to rotate, rotate that 180 degrees and then um, change the strength to something like negative 45, negative 0.45. Now let's see if we can change some of this color right here. And of course we would jump into our HSV equalizer for that and turn on this HSV equalizer, turn on the hue, and then let's go ahead and select our color by selecting our color selector tool and control click. And then let's get rid of that point. Now if we increase this, ooh, if we decrease this, you can see how much blue there is in this scene. So Looking at how much blue there is, there's not going to be a ton that we can do outside of going ahead and opening this up in GIMP. I'm going to go ahead and 
hit F on my keyboard and select this part of my photo and then hit Control C and Control V and select new layer. What I can do is grab in the colors panel the and grab the hue saturation panel and with that pasted layer selected I can select blue and go ahead and decrease the saturation and same with the turquoise seems like magenta may also be in there now I've really desaturated this so I don't want it to be completely desaturated because then it will be without color but I can kind of play around with some of this okay so you can see this is the blue that we had before and this is now and of course if I wanted to bring some of that blue back I can just go ahead and decrease the opacity of this top layer until I feel like things are good so I felt like the sky really wasn't working for me so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and grab some colors from the sky here I've gone ahead and reselected around the mountains so I'm gonna grab this really dark blue color click OK and then I'm going to grab this turquoise color click OK and hit G on my keyboard and hit Control shift n to add in a new layer and go ahead and you can see kind of how that's working so I'll hit enter and add that in and then hit Control shift n and add in another new layer and turn off my other layer and then go ahead and grab turn that color around and for the bottom color grab this kind of grayish so now that I have these two skies I'm going to add hit control shift a to de oops control shift a to deselect and then add in a black layer mask and then grab my brush and really increase the size of my brush something really big and then you can go ahead and kind of paint in for that bottom area around the mountains and then change the force of my brush to something less oops even that's too much so I'm sorry I wasn't able to completely remove the blue from the mountains down here although if one other thing you could do is go ahead and hit control shift n and add in kind of a green, maybe a dark something, a little desaturated, something like this, a dark green. Hit Shift D. And then change the color, the blending mode to overlay. And then you can go ahead and kind of work with the amount using the opacity. So anyway, I hope that this has been helpful Rahat or Rajat, I really appreciate you sending in your photo. Thank you so much. If this has been helpful, go ahead and leave a like, comment, or subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.